before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters, Vocaloiter97, Ryan, Okui Aohara, Canadian Caesar, Brian Monette, Bowler Forever, Chris Perry, Di Oreo 101, and RF. Thank you all very much for your support, and if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link below to find out more. We'll see you there. Yeah, okay, it's taken us a while to get to this, uh, main reason being, <laughs> okay, a lot of people have been asking us why we haven't done any Nostalgia Critic videos here recently. Big explanation for that, this was explained on the podcast, if you weren't there for it, I'll explain it to you as quickly as possible. <laughs> Mike and I were doing the Star Wars, uh, old, you know, pretty much new prequel, what the prequel series had versus what the sequel series had, and right at the end of the recording session, the power went out. I joke, I'm not joking about that. The power literally just went, bzz, and I looked up, and I saw the lights flickering, and I'm like, maybe I should save it. Nah, and as soon as I said that in my head, power went out, and we lost that recording. So, the thing is, for right now, we're planning on doing a Nostalgia Critic with Micah, the Toonami one, so hopefully you can stay tuned for that. But that being said... Uh, get time for that because it's an hour long. Though. Yeah, we need to plan out a day where we can, because we may have to take a break in the middle of it. Because you know, nicotine. Oh, by the way, did you talk with Jake about that? I think I was flipping it upside down too much or something while I was trying to clean it. But oh, it's kind of su sucky because you have to flip it upside down to fill it or anything like so. Well, we can discuss it with Jake whenever we see him next. Yeah, he'll probably be back down here. Hopefully that'll. Hopefully he'll be able to like give you some pointers. It's or... kind of shit if it always has to be upright like this because that means you can't put it in your pocket or anything. Like, so yeah, that yeah that is kind of true. That that would suck, but yeah, it, the commercial series by the Nostalgia Critic has been a time honored tradition for reactions here. I remember the first one we did; it was so much fun, and then we got a copyright claim from Disney because. Doug did a uh, rendition of, uh, you know, the it's his own personal rendition of the Jack Skellington song when Jack was in the graveyard, uh, you know, contemplating what he would do after he'd been shot down, you know, after his uh, sleigh had been shot down after he tried doing Christmas. But then he was just like, you know what? I'm the, I'm the Pumpkin King. I'm going to give them a fright next Halloween. And uh, Doug pretty much did his own version saying, saying, you know, I'm the nostalgia critic. This is what I do. I should just enjoy it. And, you know, we are uh, here. Currently, I think this is the 10th one, uh, Escape from the Commercials. Uh, this uh, this one, uh, I believe we tried to do one time before, but we were unable to for some reason. Uh, but, you know what? Enough dilly-dallying. Let's just jump into it. This is Escape from the Commercials by the Nostalgia Critic. Here we go. Do it! Do it! After these messages. After these messages. After these messages. After these messages. We'll be right back. Shaquille O'Neal, a.k.a. Shaq! Well, anything with Shaq's name on it has to be of quality. The Carnival 30-minute tour. Go big and J.C. Finney. With an age of beer, I got my mojo going strong. Cool! It's the award-winning Medea Vodka with the world's only personal programmable LED display on the bottle. Nah, I <laughs> guess you need some vodka after watching his movies. As well as some choice words written in lights. <laughs> what we our money back now, So too. what do we have this time? This is your target! Introducing Shaq 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 <laughs> the palate cleanser after watching Kazam. Legal weapons! Right front! The enforcer of justice! Register. <laughs> What's even up with this guy? It's like he's so ashamed to be advertising this product, his body is rejecting the idea. Justice! Left hand! Register! This is Shaq Fu! It's really good! I really recommend it! Oh god, I'm going to hell! No wonder the villains in this game lost. They couldn't even understand who they're going up against. Shaq! Legal weapons! Size 22! Alright, be on the lookout for a guy size 22! Introducing Shaq Fu. Kung Fu Shaq style. Exactly is Kung Fu Shack style. 
Is it throwing all the leftover copies of steel nobody bought while building a fort behind Pepsi cans and all sport? Hmm, let me check the instruction book. Wow, lucky guess. <laughs> this ad is every level of 90s, with its need to feel extreme! Wide-angle close-ups, Black Wonder Woman, I think that was a thing. It's funny for the time period it came out. Size 22! It's corny, but it's a lot of fun! Kung Fu Shack style. <laughs> Sega Genesis and Super NES. I, I remember them advertising Shaq Fu. I had no idea what the hell it was about. And then when you read the story of it, you're just like, damn, I am glad I missed out on that. Because it's not good. It is not good. Mm-hmm. New Mr. T breakfast cereal. Speaking of celebrities that were disturbing me on everything. Team up with Mr. T cereal. Let's get on the team. The team that knows how to... Look, they're making a tea. That means they're the cereal now. I don't know. Just buy it. Mr. T is on it. Team up with Mr. T. Golden sweet crispy teas. One bite. Look at this girl's face. That's a face that says I'm being held hostage until you buy this damn thing. Better Morse code your way out of this one. <laughs> this is also one of the few cereal commercials that included a PSA. Mr. T here at the day I'm talking school. Oh, hey, hey, I was just kidding. They really did PSAs in these? Mr. Yes. T, breakfast cereal presents Mr. T, talk number one. Don't ask where talk number two is. Apparently the cereal wasn't popular enough for another commercial. Which is good because I had him teaming up with Pee Wee Herman talking about crack. It was weird. <laughs> so study hard, listen to the teachers, and learn something new every day. But hell with that ad. We want the one where Mr. T keeps his lines to a two-word minimum. It's cool. Yeah, it is cool. But after all the songs and stunts and action going on saying how amazing it is, do you have anything else to say about it? It's cool. That's literally the same recording! You use the same recording twice! You really couldn't record him just saying it's cool in a slightly different way? What do you think the story behind this is? So eat Mr. T cereal. It's cool. Um, that's great, but there's a lot more script to read. What? I don't say anything until I get paid by the syllable. You think I can't see into the future? Look at this cartoon that you call it Mr. T in the twits. I know I don't have long before this shit gets soggy like my nasty ass cereal. My popularity is gonna expire. Gotta store nuts for the winner. Can't you just say <laughs> stay in school or something? Oh, you mean like stay in school so you won't have to do commercials for nasty cereal that tastes like crusted rabbit shit? I pity the spoon. Stay in school. Or what's your living in the bus with a bunch of kids and spandex tights? That's creepy. People need to ask more questions. Look at this girl. She's swinging with her vagina. How could she do that? That's the devil's work. I know this chick can't last long. You want me to say more? Pay me. That's mm, all right. I think we got all that we need. Is that come wrong? Yep. You motherfucker! Mr. T cereal. <laughs> you pay me, you pay me, goddammit! And remember, you don't get CSA for school. free. You better give me a cameo in Creed Three. Yeah, it's silly, but it's Mr. T silly, and that's the coolest kind of silly there is. For me, I'll always have a soft spot for Mr. T cereal and his commercial too. It's cool. I'm gonna beam down to the dune. I'll race you. Here's a bike ad from the 80s, but it's supposed to be set in the future! It's an amazing time where people can unpause footage. Mannequins of Matt Brewer wearing Luke's Blast Shield helmet are all the rage. And bikes are so fast, they beat people beaming down to a planet. What took you so long? Yeah, pity we have nowhere to go ever since the apocalypse hit. Do I make sandcastles again? That's all we ever do! Yeah, for a product called Street Machine, there's not really any streets to use it on, is there? But it's great down neon hallways and giant dreidels covered in saran wrap. The future! Like a lot of 80s sci-fi, if it was weird, made no sense, but was shiny, it was the most high-tech thing ever made. What took you so long? Slowest beam ever, by the way. What took that damn thing so long? Naughty beam me twice last night. It was wonderful. Weird catchphrase. Did you see him in Lost in Translation? He was really good. He totally should have won that Oscar. I mean, look at him losing here. He looks so fucked up. You know Sean Penn's gonna get another one anyway. This was Murray's big chance. What a bunch of pretentious assholes. I blame politics. It's pretty stupid. His name were a little off in this one so far. 
Uh, it's just the commercials, I guess. I don't know. It's just like his jokes haven't been very good in this. So, I don't know. Hmm. Sci-fi cheese. Dude. I've heard people say I he's hit or miss like sometimes, but I've seen mostly it. hits from what I've watched. Now Skeletor charges into battle with awesome artillery. Oh, come on. That's just how Matthew McConaughey says artillery. Artillery. I can see that. Well, that's true. Except Beam Blaster. It actually fires a light beam to stop artillery. Light beam. That's a fancy way of saying we just put an awkward flashlight on He-Man's chest. Fire! And block Skeletor. Yeah, that's not the first time he blocks Skeletor. Remember when they both hit on Lion-O at that bar called the Extending Sword? New oh. artillery beam blaster set. The first light action weapon ever. Surprisingly, that's not a very big deal. They're not gonna redo the opening like. <laughs> And the masters of the dim reflecting hand lamps. <laughs> I have the battery! But only with a bullseye to the evil eye. You know, outsmarting those must not be that difficult. Haha, <laughs> I got you now, He-Man! Damn your palms! <laughs> Give up, He-Man! Figure so separately, you supply the batteries. I have the power! A pretty standard commercial for a pretty standard product. I expect more from the Masters of the Universe. The first light action weapon ever from the Masters of the Universe. Mmm. Mm. I love the taste of your fresh fruit coffee, but it's not fresh fruit. It's new tray cap. Still going. Yep, most of us know the Energizer oh Bunny. Oh, God. You know where he started? It was actually a parody of a Duracell commercial, which had a bunch of pink bunnies with batteries going out, but showed Duracell lasted the longest. Well, Energizer shit on that noise, saying they weren't even invited to this test, and not only does their battery make the pink bunny go longer, but their pink bunny has shades. <gasps> that means he's in cahoots with Attitude. Attitude! They keep going and going. Stop the bunny, please. And going and... It soon became a running joke as it brilliantly interrupted other commercials. Commercial. Yeah, you thought kid. you were what? Do what? So I did see this one when I was a kid. I did too. I saw these a lot. They were everywhere. I didn't see the first three, but... It one. keeps going and going and going. Watching something else, but suddenly, still going. Into an amazing world. Still going. Nothing outlasts. I remember that one. Yeah, you never knew when he was going to pop up and ruin a product that maybe you wanted to buy. Tension headaches this bad need a pain reliever this good. New extra strength, darn it all. No, really, that darn sounds like it might be very helpful. Still going. God damn it, I wanted to buy that. It soothes my head from your dumbass drum. This bunny's rude. These people are just trying to do their thing and he keeps getting in the way of it. How would you like if you were just going along your everyday life and just suddenly- Just knocking over all the beakers. Still going. Eventually they start hiring assassins to take him out. Shit, this battery business is hardcore. Oh, uh, Mr. Energizer Bunny. Your hippity hoppity days are over. They're pretty funny for a while, but suddenly Darth Vader couldn't even take him out. What the shit is this? There is a great disturbance in the Force. Get his battery all too easy. Why does the Empire even need his battery? Is it like the Force because there's a positive and a negative side? This is stupid. Get his battery. Yeah, that, that is seems kinda kind dumb. of trivial. While you're at it, close down B. Arthur's Cantina and give Han Solo a name. We are the Empire. Impressive. Boy, Luke's looking like a little bitch by comparison now. He got yeah. his ass kicked by a guy who can't even take out a toy bunny? Vader probably looks at the monkey with symbols like, Obi-Wan has taught you well. But the bunny beats him because the Empire can't afford better batteries for his lightsaber. <laughs> Healthcare and batteries, that's always where the cuts are. No, 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 no. Actually, no. a better yell than the no from episode three. Yeah. If anything, for the commercial, they should have had the no. Right. It's just impressive that Energizer did that fucking yell better than Lucas could make him do. <laughs> oh, oh, God. 
that's still more dignified than when he screamed no. no! Yep. See, that fits better. That fits so much better here versus the scream that they got in this commercial would actually work better in the friggin' movie. Mm -hmm. Ugh! They were funny at first, but got old kind of fast. Nevertheless, this bunny stayed an icon. No matter how annoyingly long, it kept going. It keeps going and going. Hi, who's this? I guess getting your nuts off didn't always have the same meaning. In this payday commercial, a sex hotline gets probably the strangest caller ever. And that's saying a lot given this line of work. Who's this? Uh, Mel. Well, your credit card information says Frank, so I'll just call you Frank. Mm, what are you thinking about now? Something sweet. Mm, like what? Caramel. Okay, I'll go with that. That caramel's so different. What would you like to do with it? I'd uh, cover it with roasted peanuts. Mmm, did you say roasted penis? No, roasted peanuts. Oh. Um... Am I getting punked by George Washington Carver? Who's that? He was a guy who did a lot of things with peanuts. Tell me more! Who are you? <laughs> mm, roasted peanuts and creamy caramel? Mmm, wow. You're making me so... Confused? Concerned? Confused? Hungry. What you want is a payday. I guess we'll accept this as going well. What a weird-ass ad. It's very clear it's very why weird. this guy needs to call a sex hotline, but why the hell is he wasting his time talking about paydays? Surprisingly, Christ, imagine it wasn't if he came a up with another type of actually. Candy. Yeah, because you gotta think, sex hotlines, I mean, don't get me wrong, they're, unbelievably, they're still around. I think I remember seeing that commercial as a kid, and I didn't understand it, because it was before I knew about stuff like that. You know, now yeah. that you mention Same it... Same way I Rocco's think modern that. knife went over my head that he worked at a sex call line, you know? Oh, baby, um, oh, baby, oh, baby. And, Rocco? But my mom would have been mad head? about that commercial if she saw it, I'm sure. <laughs> I remember I remember that sex hotline scene in Rocco's modern life. <laughs> Got a call from Miss Big Head. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, of course, there was the other one where... I don't know if you remember from Rocco's Modern Life, there was the one where Heifer goes to a cow farm, where they go to a cow farm, and Heifer gets confused for a uh, for a cow, and they put the sucking machine on him, and it doesn't show anything, but you see his face, and his face just goes like, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he just Yeah, fades. I don't remember that either. Oh my god. That, like, as a kid, I was just like, what? <laughs> Because I was just like, what the hell is going on? Sorry, back to the back to the nostalgia critic. Hi, who's this? Um, Almond Joe. Mmm, what are you thinking about, Almond Joe? Something sweet. Mmm, like what? Something long and brown. I'll do my best with that. I just want to put a great big nut in it. Oh, yeah, and I will do bro. my best with that. Depending on how long and brown it is, sometimes two big nuts. I really think there's better hotlines for you. I don't mind saying that I like a lot of fudge packing. I don't mind saying that you're really making me regret my job. And the more coconut I can fit inside, the better. Okay, well, I'm allergic to coconut, so I'm gonna go bye bye Wait, wait, wait no, I'm just talking about Almond Joy. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought this was all stuff you were into. Oh, no, I'm actually into necrophilia. Hello? No fuck. I bet you want an Almond Joy. The fuck. Malcolm, no. Malcolm. Yeah, I like the quiet type. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Malcolm, really? Come on, dude. A dumb ad with a dumb setup and a dumb punchline leads only one conclusion. <coughs> this is pretty dumb. You're making me so hungry. What you want is a payday. I had a trouble. Oh God. I had a trouble. Oh God. I had a trouble. monster from the way. Yes, one? I had one. They're adorable. Oh my, God. <laughs> my mom took the batteries out though because she hated the sound it made. So, I don't, which I do not blame her on that one. All your mouth says no, but your nightmares say yes. Need a little giggle? Troubles giggle at just about any change of life. They, you basically cover their uh, 
their uh, eyes with your hands and like they would be like, Wee! Well, okay. I just noticed something. Listen, listen to this. L listen to that. Okay. Uh. Oh come on, freaking typos. There we go. Also, they get really obnoxious if the battery starts to run out because they'll just go eh! every once in a while, like for no reason. <laughs> They're like a dying fire alarm battery. <laughs> this is... Ah, oh, come on. Damn it. The, the sound effects from Gundam Wing, you know the incoming call like... Yeah, this is a little similar. Mouth says no, but your nightmares say yes. Need a little giggle? Hold on, it's like... It's like... I'm on call. I have a mission. I have a mission on Earth. Chubbles giggle at just about any change of life. That's giggling, huh? Your giggles sound like a security alarm when someone's breaking into your house. You know, that classic pleasant sound? Chiggles giggle too! Okay, these things are horrifying, right? I feel like only David Lynch's kids would find these adorable. To the rest of us, they're uncomfortably disturbing. Really? I guess I'm one of David Lynch's kids, though. Given your sensibilities, Nick, that's actually... I actually believe that. I mean, you are... You would strike me as an illegitimate child of David Lynch. Fair enough. Ah! God, it's, <laughs> it's like what Nell sees when she's trying to sleep in the haunting of Hill House. No, that, that's a little more terrifying. Fun to have a jiggles around. You can't equate those two. Giggle in most any sound. If not, these things will scare you into sleep paralysis. Chubbles and jiggles, perfect friends for you. Cause the chubbles giggles the chiggle, chiggles giggle too. Chubbles and jiggles are also two STDs you can get if you're not careful. Eh, I don't like these things at all, and the ad doesn't make them any less menacing. Just get away from this shit as quickly as possible. Chiggles giggle too. Each sold separately from Animal Fair. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you mean another movie. Where is the Star Trek V video? Don't tap your finger at me, you entitled bitch! It's Star Trek V! You got Star Trek V, the final frontier. Okay, you two look like the people who'd be more excited for this. Please! Any Star Trek Vs? Ooh, thank you. Great. You do know it's Star Trek V, right? Five? Arguably, Arguably the worst Star Trek movie. And that's saying something. I mean, it's... I feel like this might have been far enough back, though, that it was just like nobody knew the difference. Because look at the commercial and the quality of the commercial. It's obviously well before internet, when people like yes. had the ability to discuss things with each other and help each other point out inconsistencies and plot holes and shit like that. Like, so, I mean, I feel like you had to really pay attention close to, like, movies back then to, like, really like make large holes in them and be like this movie was shit and okay like it, here's the thing about the old Star Trek movies all of the even ones were good ones all of the odd number ones were bad ones that's that's that was the flow of it for some odd reason I don't know why so it started off bad oh yes it, all it was was just like long extended glory shots of the outside of the USS Enterprise that lasted forever and ever. And it was just like, you, you kept hearing the... Like, for a solid 30 seconds, nothing but a glory shot. It, it's because they finally had a budget, and they could finally show off, like, high-quality uh, like high quality models and all that. But the film ha was terrible. It had the plot line was terrible. The characters were terrible. The only thing that had good for it was that the the special effects actually finally looked good. But then Wrath of Khan happened. Uh, you you ever seen Wrath of Khan? I don't watch Star Trek. Okay, Wrath of Khan is probably the most. It's the most quoted and most like famous example of a serious Star Trek movie 
that actually works. Whereas three is a continuation of the story, and it's is that not. Where Khan here. comes from. That's that is where Khan comes okay. from. Khan comes from two, Wrath of Khan, and uh, three is the continuation of it, which is it was okay, and then four. I thought four was just four is the fun, probably the funniest Star Trek film, and it deliberately pokes fun at how ridiculous. Parts of the plot line are. Five is god awful because they literally go looking for God. I kid you not. That was, and it was directed by William Shatner, and he was absolutely adamant. He's like, we need to find God. Um, the shat shat. Yeah, and then they get there, and turns out God's kind of an asshole. While they actually find God. Yes. That sounds like a dumb movie. It is a dumb movie. It's absolutely stupid. Six is a murder mystery, which is which I think is like massively. So I underrated. take back what I said because I think even back then there were probably a lot of people that watched that movie and were like, "Yeah, that was pretty dumb." Yeah, yeah. And then we get into the new, the next generation, uh, Star Trek Generations, which uh, features both uh, John Luke Picard and Captain Kirk. You know the two most famous uh, Star Trek captains, Captain John Luke Picard, the USS, USS Enterprise. Enterprise. Captain John Luke, P- I remember that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and it was actually a really good. It was actually really good to see both of them on screen at the same time. Just the story sucked. Uh, and then there was First Contact. First Contact for me is my favorite Star Trek film because it deals with so much great stuff, and also it highlights just how horrifying the Borg are. The Borg is probably one of my favorite like like sci fi villains ever. I always forget the Borg from Star Trek. What the hell are the things from? Oh, shit, I forgot the name of the series, even. <laughs> Damn it. Is it a live-action series? Yes, uh, and it has, like, two different iterations. Like, it's been rebooted, and it was rebooted, like, back before, like, reboots were, like, the thing to do. Oh. Um, and it's people with spaceships, and I've always meant to watch it because it looks badass as fuck. Um, and I watched the first episode, and it was actually badass. Was it Doctor and it Who? Was, it was dark, because they introduced a character like in the first episode that you were like, this character seems awesome, and then they killed them in the first episode. Is it? Um, no, not no, Doctor it's, Who. No, it's absolutely not Doctor Who. It Red was, Dwarf? No. Um, fuck. I feel like it has Star in the title. They've mentioned it Stargate? In, no, not Stargate. They mentioned it in uh, like one of the first episodes of Big Bang Theory, too. Like They were talking about wanting to watch it. Uh, fuck! What's the name of it? It has, like, a race of, like, basically robots that also, like, uh, have, like, a leader that's a woman, like, uh, and she's, like, one of them, too, but she looks like a human woman, and she's, like, really hot. I can't, I can't, te- I can't place it for the life of me. I'm going to be so angry <clears throat> if I can't come up with the name of the show. Damn it. Well, anyway, the last- Battlestar Galactica! Oh! Yeah. Oh! Yes! Okay. The Cylons! I knew it had Star The friggin' Cylons. Yeah, the Cylons. Okay, yeah, that's the name. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Okay, I guarantee you people are just gonna be like... I, gu- I guarantee you there's people a... People in the comments are probably like, dude, Battle I, I Galactica. knew what he was talking about. Like, the second he started yeah. talking about Bet- it. And they're like, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica. And then as soon as you yell, they're gonna be like, thank you! <laughs> Finally! Did he hear me? Did he hear me through my... Com- oh, well. I heard you. Sorry. But, yeah, so... Ah... Uh, uh, by the way, I watched the, the the first episode of Picard is available on YouTube right now, and I watched it, and it was actually really damn good, really really good. I liked it a lot. I saw posts from one of my friends that like Star Trek, and they were talking about how like they were planning to enjoy it despite like all of these complaints that the fan base has had about stuff that they're going to be doing with it or whatever. Uh, yeah. Okay. I I'm just going to enjoy the ride. I know there's people who have concerns. I know Lynn Carr is probably having a conniption fit over Picard, but what are you going to do, guys? I mean, it's not perfect. It's Star Trek. Anyway, back to it. Thanks. Fabulous. Yes. Star Trek V, they physically go looking for God? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, trust me, lady. I know. I have five babies at home. Star Trek V is perfect for them. It puts them right to sleep. Would you happen to have Star Trek? Hey, Scotty! Wow, such a cheap ass director, he didn't even get you a copy? Yes, sir. <laughs> Star Trek 5, The Final Frontier. So tell your dealer you want to see it. No, why the. 
the hell do you have to tell your dealer? It's clearly the biggest hit in the world, according to everybody! Man, no. who would have thought we're all out of Star Trek V and barbed wire? They didn't do shit at the box office, but apparently they're the voice of a generation. I like that they phrase Talk it, tell your dealer, do you want to hear it? no idea how to and advertise like in this movie. They lingo, it's like, well, let me just text uh, Matt then. <laughs> Why the fuck are you asking me for Star Trek Five, bro? Like, what the hell? <laughs> like, it's like I don't know, like, man. Do you people, want weed or not? Like, like, people like... <laughs> are hyped for that shit, dude. People are fucking hyped for it. By the way, I don't have a dealer named Matt. I just made up a random name. I don't have a dealer at all. Yeah, uh, I don't his really uh, smoke that anymore. So. Yeah, well, in truth, his dealer's name is not Matt. My it's dealers a... are the dudes at the liquor store now. So yeah, my my dealers are the dudes at the dispensary. So, that's what I go with. Anyway, uh, back to it. It just comes off as unbelievably desperate. Star Trek Five: The Final Frontier. Yeah, no, the one where I bump my head, we all sing, row, row, row your boat, and Uhura does that feather dance? Oh, that's, that's right. What am I doing? Take that away from me! This is definitely yeah, one of those that's... ads that's so bad, it's good. It makes no sense, but it's a pretty good laugh. Star Trek Five: The Final Frontier. So tell your dealer you want to see it. I'm sorry. There's my drink. I just got rid of my last copy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, What's up, right. James? Cornflakes again. It only figures the whitest of cereals would have the whitest of commercials. You know cornflakes are daddy's cereal, son. And I'm afraid you'd have to come up with a pretty convincing argument to get me to change my mind. Problem number one: A kid is trying to steal his dad's cornflakes. No. Since friggin' when? Never. Hell with those marshmallows and chocolate. I want the taste of soggy cardboard left out in the rain. Second? Mm -hmm. Well, just watch. You'd have to come up with a pretty convincing argument to get me to change my mind. Kids love cornflakes. It's what they like. They eat it in the morning. They eat it at night. It ain't just for mommy. It ain't I remember just for this. Dad. All kids like it and they like it real bad. Bad, bad. They like it real bad. So you can't keep a kid out of Kellogg. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Renegades, it's I gonna apologize. Take us forever to get through this. I, I apologize. No, I'm just going to be short with this. I apologize for that for that interaction. That is probably one of the most awkward moments I have ever I have ever experienced on this channel. I I love rap. I like I, I used to like breakfast cereal a lot. Combining the two does not work. It does not work. Oh, well, you convinced me, son. I am never buying this cereal again. <laughs> you see, Dad, this is how lame our cereal is. We got these guys for mascots. At least two can Sam never rap. Another Fruit Loops fan. Man, I got great taste. Like oh, no, that kid, kid, I remember this. Mind. This was a weird time. I don't even follow. Were these guys just waiting for someone randomly to say they need to be convinced that cornflakes could be eaten by kids, too? Was that, like, their lifelong goal? I don't get it, man. We've been wandering this street for years and years. Why are we doing this? I told you. One of these days, a grown-up is gonna need convincing that cornflakes are for kids, and then our amazing rap will save the day. But why? I just don't get why it's such a big deal. Ah! Don't ever question the cornflakes again. I'm tired and hungry. I haven't eaten since we ate our fourth member. I miss Funky Spoon. Get it together, guys! Someone's gonna need convincing one of these days. I just know it! Oh, I see you've got my Kellogg's cornflakes again. And I'm afraid you'd have to come Where's they coming from? Convincing argument to get me to the change house. my mind. Go! <laughs> kids love cornflakes, think what they like, so you can't keep a kid out of Kellogg's yeah. cornflakes. And don't forget, cornflakes are for kids. <laughs> <laughs> Was it worth it, guys? <laughs> Hold up a second. Oh I've fucking seen this before. I have seen this bit before. I don't fucking know why, but I've seen this before. <laughs> I, I don't remember. I don't remember seeing any of the rest of this that we watched so far, but I have fucking seen this bit before. Absolutely. They either ripped it off from someone else and used the same bit. Or, or he used the same bit again in another one that we watched. Or, Maybe. or wait, someone might have sent this to us on a meme stream, actually. That's right. Okay, yeah, that's, that's right. why. I yeah, think that is what happened. That's why I was freaking out for a second. I was like, I've fucking seen this before. That was it. Somebody sent this bit to us. Okay. Never okay. Mind. Sorry. We're good. <laughs> it finally happened. <laughs> years we 
finally did our rap. It's all there! <laughs> I think we wasted our lives. There's no think about it. Totally crazy and dated in all the wrong ways, this is a lame way to wake up to a lame cereal. Well, that was pretty convincing, son. <laughs> Set up joke about reviewing a nostalgia commercial. That's a real commercial here. Punchline! No punchline. Oh, I remember these dudes! These yes! In the early 2000s, Quiznos tried something sucks. surprisingly different by introducing the SPONSOR acid dreams that looked like Disney villains heaven. from Wonder Cats. If you feel they look ungodly and unnatural, fear not, their heavenly voices will win you over. The Quiznos SUCKS! <laughs> they are so good, we need the robot eating roast houses for Merrick! We are not the Huns! <laughs> That you know, I was looking at you saying, I, I love those guys. If someone did drugs and made a commercial for Quiznos, and Quiznos was like, I like you it. In a picture of some sort. We like these hubs. It must be I the ate Huns. Quiznos I see because you in of so that many history books as the Huns, but you have clarified you are not the Huns. Thank you. Thank you for making that clear. Non Huns. What the hell? They are tasty, they are crunchy, they are warm because they told them. They got a pepper bar! Unless that's a place where peppers <laughs> serve me alcohol, I'm not interested. They got a pepper bar! They got a pepper bar! <laughs> we have to stop. It only figures a restaurant that appeals to stone teenagers would have marketing by stone teenagers. This must have been made up at the last minute while that's somebody true. was coming off of Quaaludes. I wasn't a so teenager, but I was stoned in, in college and I ate a lot of chicken carbonara us. sandwiches. Uh, sponge monkeys! Yeah, and uh, and they got a song! Yeah goes like this, which I'm totally not just making up right now, um... We got new subs! No one's a special prize! You had me at Sponge Monkeys! I've waited all my life for someone to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you even hear the announcer being like, Quiznos has all new subs at... Oh god, what is that? I didn't know I was attached to garbage like that. I thought this was a respectable company. Oh hell no, I'm out of here. No, no, tear up the contract, I don't care! There might be a reason that Quiznos don't really exist around here anymore. It's true. Which makes me sad, but... It makes no sense, and I guess that's the point. But to their credit, I do remember it, and so do a lot of people. It is what it is. I just don't know what it is. Quiznos Quiznos. Tasty. Oh my god. Hit movie hook I remember. Sell and they had commercials to go along with them. Okay, that kid is getting way too much joy out of Hook dangling there. He looks like for the first time he's feeling true power. Power over plastic dust and ah! he <laughs> will taste like victory. Face. Boy, they really downplayed Rufio's death, didn't they? Honestly, I feel like a lot of these seem yeah, to be bit. more faithful to the movie. Now, for preschoolers, Playmobil Hook action figures. <laughs> Hook! No! You know what I wish? <laughs> you know what I wish? What? I wish I, I, wish I had, had a dad. Like you. Like you? <laughs> <laughs> Rufio's death, like, ruined me as a kid. I was like, oh my god. Playmobil hook action oh. figures. Because of a grown woman. I was a very emotionless a child. I'm a very years, emotionless I adult, too. Do what? I said I was a very emotionless child, and I'm a very emotionless adult, too. There's, like, things I can count on one hand that have actually made me cry. Was it Rufio one of them? Nope. Really? Yep. I don't know. I just never got, like, that invested in movies as a kid to where like I felt like like I knew everything that was happening wasn't real so I wasn't like oh he's actually dead and stuff no yeah. it's just that you I, get I invested know. in the characters it, it's hard it's hard to fucking describe like my brain well, when it was stupid as a kid but well me as I, an adult I've actually <clears> cried <throat> to like two anime and 
There was a real movie at one point, like, but a, a video game at one point. I can't remember which one it was now, but like Elfin Lead, I cried because it was sad as fuck. Yeah. And Love Live, I happy cried because oh. it just like it made me like it, I was in a very dark time, and it like was the most like uplifting thing I had in my life at the time. So I was just like, yeah, like for the girls I, and stuff, you know. I okay. I'm not ashamed to admit this. I'll fucking say it. I cried uh, at Bridge to Terabithia. I did not for that, because I was also a young kid when I saw that that just didn't... I saw it, and it absolutely... Because here's the thing. I liked Anna Sophia Robb a lot back then. I thought I thought she was awesome. I thought she was, like, really, really cool. And uh, when it was said that she died... Cause here's the thing. I lived out in the woods most of my life. And there was a girl that I used to play with a lot back in the day. Her name was Allison, and she was really cool. And, um, you know, we, you know, we used to like, th- you know, oh, throw rocks at each other. Oh, it was fucking Infinity War. Like, yeah. Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah, like I rolled a tear at the end of Infinity War. Uh, and sure. we all know why. Yeah. And there's very few things that have made me cry, but Bridge Terabithy is one that got me. Uh, Forrest Gump got me, and, uh, because, you know... If you don't shed, like, for me, I, I shed a tear when Force Mama passed away. And Jenny, too. Because, you know, those are the two most important people in his life, and they were gone just like that. It's just very sad. Very, very sad. But anyway, back to it. Too cute. Nevertheless, it's a lot of fun and captures most of the spirit of the film pretty well. A decent toy ad based on a decent movie. Put figures and attack her out so separately. You put her out together. New from Mattel. You man! You stupid, stupid man! <laughs> <laughs> Dante Bosco. New kids on the block. Yeah, oh yeah, no, it like wasn't a huge TV. thing. New kids on the block had so much merchandise, it was hard to keep track of. But these creepy ass stalkers will try. I'm the number one fan. I've got all the kids, their stage, and the new kids in the block phone. I don't even go outside anymore. The day ball hurts my eyes. <laughs> Gotta love it when the new kids actually made it into oh, an no. ad themselves. 24 hours down, a brand new hotline. Oh, Let's for God's sakes, Donnie, stop nine acting nine good. Nine zero nine five, kid. These guys must have graduated from the Nottingham School of Acting because their acting is just being Nottinghams. Look at me, I'm nodding. I'm nodding on the phone, girl. Woo! That's right, I'm nodding. We're both oh, nodding. Joey. Isn't that something? I'm nodding like a dog. All right, I'm serious again, I'm deep. But the best of these ads are the ones that pin the fangirls against each other to see who's the scariest. Who's their number one fan? I'm the number one fan. I've got all five concert kids with all five personal interview cassettes. I am. I've got all five concert kids with their cassettes and the new kids' day. I'm the number one fan because I'm going to pay for all their unemployment bills when they're not popular anymore. That's not just dedication, that's practical. Seriously, how far can these obsessions go? I'm their number one fan because I've collected samples of Johnny's hair to add to my voodoo doll. He'll go out with me if he doesn't want his testicles in a blender. <laughs> I'm their number one fan because I've collected enough of Danny's blood to make several clones. Soon my army of Danny's will oh arrive! <laughs> I'm the number one fan because I have Johnny tied up in my storage room. <laughs> Shut up! Shut your damn mouth! I know you love it here! I have guests out there that I am trying to entertain! Damn. New kids on the block Damn, Tamara just went hard on that. Obsessive, but I guess that was the intent. This ad did a good job making sure everyone tried to be their number one fan. My sister Dang, loved New Kids, kids on the Block. She loved them. Who do you think the number one fan is? My sister. Terminator's back. Yeah. Remember when hard R films had kids' toys? How did yep. Batman Returns get in trouble for having Happy Meals and yet a movie with countless impalings had these at every Toys R Us? What can we say? We thought the sequel would be more for kids after seeing the first one. A family product. Fight evil with this mobile assault vehicle. I have that! I think I still have that. <laughs> I think I still got that somewhere, dude. That's funny. 
Remember that from the movie? Yeah, I think no, it didn't exist. That with Arnold's other vehicle from Batman and Robin, a film that should have been R on principle. Disguised as a policeman, Evil T-1000 aims to destroy. Boy, his shape shifting's improving because that looks nothing like Robert Patrick. It looks nope. more like Tom Arnold escaping questions about Roseanne. Evil T-1000 <laughs> aims to destroy. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't the movie kind of address this? Can form complex machines. Guns and explosives have chemicals, moving parts. It doesn't work that way. Bullshit! Kenner disagrees! He can totally do that now! I think it'd have to be, seeing how his stabbing weapons look like a melting Washington monument. Terminated this time! Here's another one that's kinda cool. Actually pumping Arnold up with human flesh over the endoskeleton. Battle damage! Add flesh compound! Battle Terminator damage. created! That was like a phrase used from multiple toys Terminator. back in the day. I'm back. Battle uh, damage! I don't think you're ready to fight yet! Arnold still got clothes before kicking some ass. Granted, you might be looking for a lot of these looks, but you so know, with that package, battle damage I don't think you're gonna get much. Yeah, yeah. Atomically impaired I remember that. Kendo. No, well, despite not being a ton like the movie, the commercials are still pretty creative and capture the tone of an R-rated gore fest. Seriously, this is so weird. The party's over, T-1000. Adios, amigo. Or wait, was it... I like how they always knocked blocks down to take out villains and action figure commercials. When you're a toy company, yeah. you have to ask the question, what are girls most likely to play with? Dolls, fashion, a wizard in a bubble that can predict the future? The usual! I remember that. What was that, that last one? Ask Xandar. Wave your hand and he speaks. Ask Xandar is a dating game. No need to rewind the video, I'll repeat it. It's a dating game about which boy likes you. Ask him, ask him, ask Xander. This game clearly understands every girl's need to talk relationships with a warlock. Xander, am I going to the prom with a geek? Please say no. <gasps> Excellent chance. You have a wizard <laughs> that you're asking questions and you're worried about going to the prom with a geek. You are a geek. What the fuck? Yeah. I remember that commercial. I wanted a Xandar, but the you know what? The only girls that fucking own that are probably chicks that play D&D. &D. Few and far between, I guess. I mean, they probably existed. Like, no, I know they guarantee know they, they existed. It's just... I, <clears throat> I've been to D&D &D games, and I've seen very few women. There's very, a lot more few. of them nowadays. Yes, there was there probably are. not as many when it first came abroad. Oh, no. Self-admittance that they like D&D? &D? Oh, hell no. Yeah, you had to probably be a what? lady that didn't give a fuck about your social life. You should admire her. Right Absolutely. <laughs> he knows everything. Is there a future for me and Bobby? That's a definite no. <sighs> Hello, Bobby. It's Melinda. I think it's time we broke up. I really thought we were going somewhere too, but Xandar told me there was nothing for us. Who the fuck is Xandar? Xandar? A magic toy wizard that predicts the future. What the fuck? What? Could you say that again? Your voice became distorted because you were yelling so loud. Hello? 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 Raise your hand and he speaks, gets what he predicts, and the winner gets the special fortune red. Should I pull the plug on Grandma's life support? Absolutely! Hmm, that seems a little harsh. She might pull through- Dude, the bitch has lived too long! Yes, master! <laughs> you will get a phone what call the fuck? about this. <gasps> Look at this girl's face. She isn't amazed the phone rang. She's amazed she stayed in this room so long with two nutballs listening to Plastic Gandalf. It cuts before she bolts out the room, slamming the door. Excellent chance. It's ridiculous ad for a ridiculous toy, and my prediction is this will be found at a lot of garage sales. Ask Xandar the talking wizard game. Definitely. <laughs> Everywhere. Oh Three God! Pokemon. Yes, I remember so this one. You were triggered by my joy of Pokemon being destroyed. Safe place, ball. Protect me from reality. I guess it only makes sense to look at another Pokemon commercial. This one's for a product called Pokemon Ball Blasters. What? <laughs> okay, Pokemon I have to ask, Blasters. why did they make Pikachu in this? If you if you want to pause and rewind to the Pikachu there, actually... real quick. He has been doing some cocaine. Like he's been yeah, look at that. Look at that right cocaine. there. He, he's just like, Pika Pika! <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so he's just like got it all over his mouth for some reason. Yep. I don't know why they Hey man, he's got to stay hyped it. up, dude. He got he got, he got to stay hyped. He's like, uh, This is like, this is the kind of commercials and toys that actually came out when I was actually playing Pokemon Red 
on my original ass gray Game Boy. Yes, I remember those. And just having to the worry brick all the time about fucking youth group leaders and teachers and people oh my fucking God. taking it away from oh me. Oh my God, yeah. Or not letting me save the goddamn game. Like, before, like, I had to go do something, because, like, that was the thing. You were playing Pokemon constantly, and then they would suddenly tell you to stop, and you didn't have enough forward notice. I actually started begging my youth group leaders and different people. I'm like, look, you got to give me a five to ten minute heads up if we're going to be stopping and I can't play this anymore, if I'm going to play it right now. Is that okay? Like, because I got fed up with them getting mad, and, like, I threw a fit one day in church because I was supposed to be... Uh, going back to like you know class or whatever and i was like we're in like a battle you know like i have to turn it off and save it Mm -hmm. and they're like no you're turning it off now and i'm like no i can leave it on with the volume down and they're like no you're turning it off and i'm like no i'm fucking not turning it off (laughs) like i threw a fit i was like if you turn my game boy off if you turn my game boy i was like gonna murder this church lady (laughs) like (laughs) <laughs> I was hardcore about Pokemon, man. Yeah. I remember... <laughs> I was I told, a hardcore eight-year-old. <laughs> I told the story about how I got my, my Pokemon stolen. Uh, I also... Um, I remember Pokemon cards back in the day were were the shit as well. Uh, I brought like a bunch of holographics to school and everything. Turns out, someone broke into my, uh, my backpack and stole them all. And I never found out who for the longest time. And I got grounded for, like, a week because of that, because I spent so much money on them. And anyway... That fucking blows. No, I know. You got grounded for someone else being a fucking dick to you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Mom told me, you know, if I take him to school to be careful and keep an eye on him. I thought, hell, leave it in my backpack, it'll be all good. No, turns out it wasn't. Oh, and uh, I found out who stole them years later. Uh, I was sitting in a dude's house... Uh, here's the thing. I they were stolen like I think yeah it was uh, sixth grade sixth grade when they got stolen. I remember being a junior in high school, and I was over at a dude's house. I'm not gonna say his name. I'm just gonna call him. Um, I'm just gonna call him Ted. Fuck face. No, I'll just call him Ted. <laughs> uh, he goes. Oh yeah, man. But you should call him James, because he stole your Pokemon. <laughs> no, no, he's not worthy of that. I was sitting there, and I was just, you know, we were sitting there playing a game, and then all of a sudden, I was just like, man, I remember, like, back in the day, someone stole, like, a shit ton of my Pokemon cards, and I got grounded for a week for it, and all of a sudden, I just hear, oh, shit, man, I just remembered something, it was me, and I'm like, what, and he's like, yeah, dude, that was me, I, I, I remembered, you showed him off, and I was just like, you know what, it, it was like, I just, I didn't, I thought, man, were you... You know, where your family's got money and everything, I figured you could go and get more. And I'm like, my family doesn't have money, dude. I bought them. I saved up my money to go buy them. My parents don't buy me shit. And to which he was just like, oh, fuck, dude, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't, and, he's, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. You took those from me, right? You took them from me. And he's like, Look, man, it's not a big deal. I'm like, no, fuck you, not a big deal? I've been wondering what the fuck happened for the last five years of these goddamn things, and I'm gonna sit, and you're gonna sit here and you're gonna tell me, you know, to my face, that you stole them? If that's for real, dude, then fuck you. Because I went through a shit ton of stuff over that, over those things, dude. I spent a shit ton of money getting them, and I got, and as soon as they got stolen, I got grounded. And my mom, and you know... And then he was just like, "Look, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I, I didn't know." And I'm like, "I like bullshit, motherfucker. Fuck you." And I got up and I left his house and walked away. And he came back with a peace offering like a couple days later. <clears throat> uh, he gave me a Guitar Hero, hmm. the original Guitar Hero, with the guitar controller. I probably would have called that even. Well, I I asked him. I'm like, "What's this for?" And he's like. Look, man, I'm really sorry. I didn't know that it bugged you that bad. I I just... Can we move on from this? And I'm like... All right. All right. And then, you know, I got the... I got them from him, and uh, that was it. That was... That was it. Guitar Hero was an expensive game. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. But, anyway, yeah. Uh, back to this. I... Can't believe I actually have another opportunity to play this, but... You're a fool. 
Okay, to the commercial's credit, I think the item is called Ball Blaster. Which isn't a ton better. No. Apparently their popularity is so amazing, even Mickey Mouse has to chime in. Their whirlwind power blows them away. Oh, no! Yeah, you know just Bob down the hall was the one who recorded that line. Blows them away. Oh, no! Hey, Bob, our actress couldn't make it in today. Can you just imitate Princess Peach turning into Mr. Bill? Oh, no! Great, go back to clean the toilets. Even Pikachu sounds like he's half-assing it. Can they be mastered? Is that you? Should he be more excited and less questioning? Is that you? Especially considering on, he's high on cocaine. I'm tired. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Come on, just say it. You know I used to play Hamlet at the Pokey Theater? Just say it. I don't even care if you act like you mean it. <sighs> Pikachu? Huh? You said the thing that makes us millions. Ha 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 ha. I hate everything. Me too. Well, there's definitely one kid that takes this ball thing pretty seriously. You can put Pokemon power in your pocket. Gotta catch him all! Kid! He means the pocket in your pants, not your drawers! These suckers are gonna be blasting my balls all throughout math class! Yeah, I'm not sure Poke Testicles is a fetish, but if it is, we know there's a hotline that'll take him up on it. <laughs> I guess it's a pretty standard ad, and there's nothing annoying about it, but... It's it, was, it was weird it's and It's an very okay commercial, odd. just don't ask what makes this kid squirt. Gotta catch him all! Pokemon Ball Blasters, Battle Figures, Power Bouncers, and Talking Pokemon, each sold separately from Hasbro. Here's an old school one, all the way from the 70s. Ah, the 70s. They knew what was sexy back then. Charlie's Angels, Wonder Woman, long hair, tight pants. For all its faults, this is a time period that knew how to be hot. So, what sizzling... Pants, for all its faults, this is a time period... That's Pam Greer. I was wondering. I was like, I was just gonna say there was nothing hot about the pants style. <clears throat> no, I don't like the I don't like the ultra tight pants like that. But I do like Pam Greer, killing it, girl. Greer that knew how to be hot. Is that? Yeah, that is. That's Wonder Woman right there. Uh. <laughs> so, what sizzling angle are they taking up here? There's one person nobody can resist, and that's a baby. Uh... We'll start. So love made baby soft with the innocent scent of a cuddly clean baby. Uh, I mean, I don't. Uh... What? And foaming bath, body lotion, body powder, and body mist. So innocent it may well be the sexiest fragrance around. Okay. Did somebody get arrested for that? Because they should have. I hope so! Arrested and beaten with a friggin'. Billy Club! Good God, that's terrifying. Okay, alright, uh, I'm yeah, not Jacob from Twilight. I don't look at a baby and imagine them at a bangable age. I just look at them and see a baby. That grew up very sexy. Loves baby soft. Okay, are I they mean, going for like a Lolita thing here? Because they're going for a Lolita thing. I if you remove the, the, the things he's saying... Then yeah, she's pretty hot, and like the whole like lip thing is pretty hot. But like, he's making it fucking weird, like almighty this, weird, like you know, holy fuck. I've said this before. Fuck, fuck Vladimir Nabokov. Who? That dude is a pedophile supreme. Fuck Woody Allen. Fuck all those assholes who are just like, oh, the heart wants what it wants. No, it is wrong. It is wrong for you to mess with underage girls. Is that not is that not a commonplace thing? Apparently not. I mean, it, it, it's it's insanity to me how people can just be like, oh well, that's just how it. Is. No, no. Well, I think everybody gets that. I'm just talking about how fucking weird the commercial is. No, this is no, this is like it's promoting almost. To me, this is almost like promoting pedophilia, dude. What the fuck? Well, that's what it comes off as. I think it's something that someone did not think through at all. No, the context with this is just broken. Look, me, I'm always about context. You know, I'm I, actually, I'm debating making a shirt saying context matters. Don't ruin my fun. That's, you know, that's, that's my thinking on the whole thing. But the context with this is broken. Especially if this is the uncut commercial. Oh my god! Love's scaring me right now. Because innocence is sexier than you think. No. no. I never thought of innocence no. as sexy because I never wanted to. No! Like, isn't innocence kind of the opposite of sexy? Like the direct yes. opposite? If you look in a dictionary or something, wouldn't it just say it's even that? This feels wrong! For your baby at Christmas. 
Wait, so now my lover's a baby, or it's actually four babies? Both are insanely unsettling. I just want to know what kind of creep I'm dealing with. This is every layer of ew I think you can legally show. It's crazy how this starts off so alluring and quickly turns into super I don't even know that you can ew. legally show this. There's one person nobody can resist, and that's a baby. It's hard to even know what to say. Why do the most disturbing commercials always require babies to be in them? Does the uh, agency of creepy-ass commercials just meet up and say, Not creepy enough! Stick some babies in there! The innocent scent of a cuddly, clean baby. This is eewy. This is so eewy. I don't like watching it. I don't like thinking about it. It's just ew. ew you stop ew, showing ew, it, dog. Shame on all Move of you on. and the ew you have let loose on the world. Ew. Because innocence is sexier than you think for your baby at Christmas. <sighs> Look, if there's anything I want to leave you with before I take off here, it's that commercials can be creepy. Commercials can be scary. Commercials can be made by very disturbed people. That's the point, yeah. That's it. Yeah. I got you. I get that. Thumbs up on that So I'm one. pretty sure, like, uh, whoever made that commercial, as soon as that commercial aired, heard... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. They, 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 just the whole, the... FBI, open up! Boom, boom, boom! I don't have a thing to smack on like you do over there. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. I need a I need a palate cleanser after that one. I have no words other than just damn. 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 No. 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 I Normalizing that kind of stuff is honestly to me one thing I fear more than anything because I got I got Two nephews and a niece. And if anything were to happen to them in any way, shape, or form like that, I would stomp the person who's responsible. I would stomp their guts out. I would stomp their guts out and I would hang their entrails on the fucking wall as an example to anyone who thinks to, mo who thinks to mimic that kind of behavior. I despise that kind of behavior. In, and the fact that that commercial right there, you know, if that's the full context of it, I would I, I would happily pile drive the person who made that commercial into the fucking ground. Like I would I would smash their head on the concrete. Fuck them. I, that's all I've got to say about it. Nikki, anything to add? The only thing I can think is if the commercial was made by like a old lady. And she was like the one that came up with the concept and everything. I Even then, still would be the dude reading the script and would be like, "Wait, no, <laughs> this no, is gonna then, sound so it, wrong." If it's an old lady, I'm gonna look at that old lady and just be like, "Well, the old lady's probably like women like to have the baby soft legs after the shave and everything." And it's so, <sighs> like I could almost excuse it from the mentality of a of a sweet grandma, you know. But it's like it's just it comes off completely the fucked wording up. is just yeah, terrible. It's, it's not good <laughs> no it isn't jesus it's like that All commercial right. should be burned in a fire pit and oh yeah, probably burn... if it wasn't a sweet old lady that wrote the commercial which it probably wasn't the person no, who made it alongside burn, of it burn that commercial in a pit get the ashes take it to a different state dig a hole in the middle of the woods no one would ever suspect bury it there and then cover it up with foliage so that no one would know. And poop on top of it. Then they would you, know. Before you cover it up. Now, if you poop on top of it, then if someone starts to dig it up, they just find poop and they're like, oh, this is just a poop hole. And so they rebury it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. That's, That's a good one. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was a Nostalgia Critic Escape from the Commercials. Hope you all enjoyed it. Because I did, for the most part. Until the very end. I enjoyed the jokes about the cornflakes. And I enjoyed seeing Snuggles again. And the Quiznos commercial. Yeah, and the, definitely and the, the Quiznos. Pokemon. And the Pokemon was interesting. It was nostalgic, even though it was a horrible commercial and weird. Yeah. Um, Ball blast. But other than that, this could have probably been 
He could have had some better jokes for the first half of things, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, fair enough. And we could have done without seeing the fucking weird-ass pedophile commercial at the end, too. Yeah. That uh, was just yeah. kind of a... I, I, that, uh, that does bad things to just your mood. <laughs> like, Indeed it does. It kind of fucks up your mental state a little bit. It's like, God, fucking people thought this was a good idea, and my day is sort of ruined because of it. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to end it here, ladies and gentlemen. This was Nostalgia Critic Escape from the commercials. Uh, once again, thank you all very much for tuning in. And I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you then. Peace out. Oh, my God.